And welcome to this week's episode of the It's Just Dinner podcast, where we're changing the dating culture one episode at a time. I'm your host, Tom Robinson, and back in studio and sitting right across Tom, from me, it's, it's my so co-host, here. Bob Walls. It, it was great to be in California, but the entire time I was there, I thought, California is beautiful, the ocean's great, but I wish I was back with Tom. Sitting in across the studio. from Tom. That's where I, my heart was here it's, the well, entire time. My I, mind was on the beach. But my heart was here with you. As it should be, well, right here you know, on the It's Just Dinner podcast. One episode at a time, you know. And that's what we're doing here. Right. Well, you notice over sitting next to you is Macy. Macy, again, welcome. Filling in. Hi, guys. I'm always, back. Filling Always in for glad Sophia. to have Macy here with us, yes. And so welcome, Macy. Thank Thanks you, for thank joining you. us. And we have a, a guest with us today coming in remotely, mm-hmm. and we're so happy that she's here. Our guest is Lonnie Harmon. Lonnie is a licensed therapist and the CEO of The Dating Counselor, where she helps singles create their own successful dating relationships, Mm. uh, which is very interesting. She's been doing this for over 10 years Wow! and actually helped hundreds of people. So she's going to have a lot of information for us. She used, I'm really interested in this. She uses a program called the Relationship Screening Method, which we'll have to talk to her about. And she also has her own podcast. Oh. So she's one of us. Wow. And she has a podcast called Building a Successful Relationship. So I'd like to welcome you to the podcast. Lonnie, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to meet both. I wish I could be there in person, but this will do. Well, I wish you could. And the fact that you couldn't be here in person, at least you wore the BYU blue. We, <laughs> I did. I got to represent. We are, represent. We are grateful for uh, that. Well, thank you for coming. And, you know, maybe just... Tell us a little bit about what you do and what you feel like your specialty is. Thank you so much. Yeah. So my specialty is working with singles and helping them to identify the hiccups that they have in the dating process and then coach them through that. So sometimes when we identify hiccups, that means that we do individual therapy. And sometimes that means that they do coaching. And so I use uh, different methodologies depending on what they need to help them work through what their hiccups are. Generally speaking, the client populations that come to me um, have anxiety issues. So they suffer from relationship anxiety or they suffer from something called relationship OCD. Mm -hmm. And so we work through that and help them to get into a relationship that is successful. And then uh, if that relationship works out and goes towards marriage, great day. If not, Mm -hmm. then help them repeat the pattern. Right. That's interesting. And so do you find that you have an ongoing clientele? Are you, do you have a number of people who fit that criteria that are coming to you on a regular basis? I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, typically I'll get, um, you know, one client that's referred by a friend. And then as the two of them have a good experience, as I'll kind of morph and getting into their whole friend group mm. <laughs> will come in. Oh, yeah. Kind of and of then, uh, yeah, it kind of, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it, I've been blessed for a while now that it's mostly been referrals. Wow. Interesting. What, what are some of the hiccups? You've mentioned that a couple of times that when you say hiccups, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So a common hiccup that I see is that in the early phase of dating, like thinking when either you're meeting in real life or you're on an app, how to transition from that into a first date. Hmm. There's and what, do you, and what do you recommend? And, and and so what you're saying is that there's a lot of people, your clients, that have a hiccup with that, meaning that they have some impediment between, they're not successful in doing that. They're not successful Correct. in going to that first date. What, what, yeah. are the re, what are generally the reasons that preclude them from being able to make that step? Right. Great question. I think that uh, the first reason is usually safety. And safety mm-hmm. can mean a number of things, meaning like their actual physical safety. They're not familiar with somebody well enough to say like, yes, I would like to go on a date with you. And there's not, uh, they want a a large amount of time to get to know somebody before they would Mm -hmm. agree to go on a date with them. And also that kind of getting to know you process happening through text messages is, is pretty common. And so there's a lot of to be misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. And then when someone's done texting and they want to get, uh, off the app or, or off the text, then whose job is it to transition into the date? Right. 
what are you supposed to say, that kind of thing. It's certainly become a lot more complicated, hasn't it? Back then, <laughs> the day where you just pick up the phone and call them, you, you know, but there's still a lot of anxiety in that process too as well. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it's kind of interesting. Do you find that a lot of the people that you work with have had previously negative experiences where th there's something that's happened in their life that has caused them to have anxiety and lack of trust for people that they don't know? Yeah, it's either that they've had an experience in life or sometimes they just get vicarious trauma through storytelling oh. because there's a large amount of storytelling about relationships that didn't work out just as much as there is that did work <laughs> out. Interesting. They don't yeah. necessarily know what they're looking for. And so they get really confused about, you know, you, you like, for example, well, you should have it. You should hit it off really quick. Right. Well, what does that what does that actually yeah. mean? What does that you know? mean? So, so I, you know, we see that a lot where people are kind of in a little bit of too much of a rush to get into a relationship. So they think if they look at someone in the eyes, they should immediately know if that's going to be their companion, their forever love, where it, a lot of times they don't understand that it takes time to develop relationships. Right. And I mean, you could attribute, you could attribute that to just that beautiful song from Saturday's Warrior. Yeah. It just, it, it, it imprinted on so many of our hearts. Yes, it's true. Yeah. It, and I think that's probably, it's very problematic in our culture because of that. And I think that that's mm -hmm. what confuses a lot of people either in not developing a relationship or developing the wrong relationship. And yeah, maybe sometimes you're working too hard to make it work. Right. Now, are you talking about people mostly on apps? That's what it sounded like. Or are you talking about people that are meeting in person as well? I think either way, I think apps are, are probably the bigger problem in terms of transitioning from off the app into a date. Right. But mm -hmm. I still see hiccups when, when um, clients are meeting in a singles ward or through singles events that maybe the, the gentleman will get their phone number and then the female will you know, respond, and then they're kind of stuck in that same texting loop. Right. Interesting. And one of the things Bob and I talked about, and, then, and it's where the name of this podcast comes from, is the idea of when you meet someone and you talk to them, then you just go out to dinner. And that's really where this came from, is it's just <laughs> dinner, which the idea is to just sit across from someone on a, a very low-key type of situation where you're both eating and talking, and we recommend you limit it to an hour and then you just see how it goes. You, we kind of, we, we found some research that said the average date lasts about 56 minutes, the, the average first date. And so we kind of feel like if you can go an hour and sit down and talk, that maybe you can get to know each other a little bit better. It's that really that one-on-one -on -one that we're looking for. Do you find that to be the case? Yes. And I loved your platform. As soon as I saw you guys, I started following you and I was like, Yes, please, everyone, look at this. Because well, Tom, now, now, just because now you said that, I like you a lot more. I was say, now. There we have a professional uh, counselor no, no, therapist really. telling us we're I right. Love I, it. I, love I love this. Because... I, I love this woman. She's brilliant. Um, so, so when you have people who are in this kind of conundrum, what do you tell them? What, what advice do you give to them to help push them past Yeah, this? how do you get them off the app and into a, into a dinner? Well, I think one of the first things you have to do is kind of demystify what the date actually means. The word date has so many different definitions in our culture. And so it's just saying like it's a date, which means it's an opportunity to figure out if you guys want to be acquainted with each other or even just kind of casual friends. It doesn't mean that you have to have a whole bunch of information within that hour to determine time and all eternity. Yes. Right. Please, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, we just say you know, I, use I'm, the date as just, the hour. I'm starting to think that you and I are, are related now be, because you, <laughs> you, 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 we, we think exactly the it, same it, on this topic. It's a little scary, it, you yeah. know, but uh, it's also very uh, rewarding to think that, that we've, we've run into this same problem over and over again as you have. And, and that's mm -hmm. what the, the reason we wanted, again, to, we wanted to eliminate the word dating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. we, we want to get rid of that word for the same reasons that you just mentioned, because it carries a connotation with it. Uh, are you dating? Wh which in a, mm -hmm. in a normal situation, that would be a normal thing. But for us, it means, are you looking for someone well, to marry? Or, or let's let's ask, we, I found this out last week. Uh, Macy, what does it mean if you're dating? 
if you're dating, <clears throat> you're officially boyfriend and girlfriend. And yeah. You're not seeing That's anyone a, else. So there you That's go. There's it. what it's young exclusive. people think about. You're ex- and, and if you're dating, you're exclusive. And if you're not exclusive, then according to Macy, you just have a thing. <laughs> You got a thing. Yeah, that's true. You do. You only have a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a date. So there you go. There thing. you go, Lonnie. This is what this <laughs> is what we learned last you week. Guys, Every semester we get a new group so of accurate. college students. Yeah. <laughs> have you? Has she taught? Has she taught you about the talking stage? <laughs> Let's hear. Tell well, us about the talking. I, I know stage. we know the hangout stage. What's yes. the talking? What's the talking stage? The talking <laughs> stage is before the hangout stage, and I think it's where love goes to die. <laughs> Oh, oh that's so interesting. Oh, it's, where love, it's where love goes Please, to die. That should be more. that should be a movie. Um, where love goes to die. Yeah, what next, does that mean? Next on Netflix, where love goes to die. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, tell us, tell us about the talking there. stage and why we should tell people to stay away from it, other than the obvious. Macy, I'd love to hear what you're what you think of the talking stage. Like what it is first, we get like a good definition. Okay, so I would say the talking stage is when you're kind of texting them, you're like kind of hanging out with them, but you're not necessarily a thing yet. Because when you're a thing, it's like you kind of, you know, you like each other and talking's like, oh, well, I think we like each other, but like, I'm not really sure. Ah, so, so love goes to die right there. <laughs> is, is that is that what, is that correct? Is Macy correct? She is. And the reason oh, that love goes okay. to die there is because of the uncertainty. Right. People can only tolerate so much uncertainty before they feel this energy kind of burst out of them or they lose Mm. interest. And when uncertainty lasts too long, then it just fades. Everything just stops. And so you're, Macy, fill us in here. You're you're talking, you're texting. Maybe one person is feeling it, the other one's not. There's that, like Lonnie just said, a lot of frustration and things aren't just going well. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, I think it can be frustrating sometimes when you don't really know, like, what they're feeling. And so the talking stage can last a long time because it can kind of give a person the opportunity to leave whenever they want Mm. because it's not – it's like there's commitment there. Uh So I guess it could be – it can be frustrating. Hmm. So, So, Lonnie, how do we move someone from the talking stage into the thing stage? Or eliminate the talking stage. (laughs) Or eliminate that talking stage and actually go out to dinner. Just don't talk to people. Just – uh, go out to dinner with them and then that... talk face to face. Oh, I, yeah, I, I can't. You're going to have to put this in a frame for us. So I love the. You're right. So the to get out of the talking phase, what you want to do is recognize that the reason the talking stage exists is so you can establish a little bit of comfort and safety, but it doesn't need to last a really long time. You're just trying to get enough information that you could say yes, I would like to take them on a date, or mm-hmm. I'd like to go on a date, and then you move. So two to three mm. days move off from from talking and then you don't necessarily turn into a thing you actually go on a date go to dinner go to dinner mm. and and the reason being is because you can't talk it to death you, you when you have that uncertainty there and both people are just treading water pretty soon you get tired and you just say forget the whole thing right so that, yeah, that's there's where... the... There's this unspoken message that we hear that if someone's talking to me for a super long time before they actually ask me out, they must not be that interested. Right. Uh, and you can understand that. Macy, you see that? Is that the case? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, and so get to, you know, don't bury the lead. Just get right to it. Either get out there and go out to dinner and see if you got anything or don't. Just move yeah, on. Yeah, and I think you can, you can say something like a bridge thing like, Hey, I feel like I've I've gotten to know you well enough that I'd like to take you to dinner. Do you feel safe coming out to dinner with me? I mean, mm. or mm. let's make sure we're right. in public. I want to make sure you feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, Bob and uh, I always say that the man and woman should drive separately to meet for dinner. Yes. At that, mm-hmm. uh, then then you can always leave. Either one of the two can always mm-hmm. leave if they need to. Well, for safety mm-hmm. reasons, you don't know this person, right. but. But generally the case is so you can leave if it's going bad. You're not dependent Mm -hmm. on this person to drive you home. So this isn't going to be a two or three hour (laughs) extravaganza. Yeah, you're you're basically stuck there. If it's going well, you can stay longer. If it's not going well, you can just exit comfortably saying, well, I I got to go to my car. You know, (laughs) Lonnie, you wouldn't believe how many times young women have told uh, me and Bob that they get in a car with a boy and they drive them up to the mountains. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's it's fra- I'm I'm betting you have some good bad date stories. I'm just betting that oh, you do. Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to have you on our bad date story episode. 
So oh, you can, I you can just fill us in so you can I'm share because we're getting tired you of guys, our bad date stories. If I lived closer to Provo, I would literally just go up and like hide in the bushes and knock on windows <laughs> and be like, do you need to have a DTR first? Does <laughs> she feel good here? <laughs> so I'm wondering what what is it that you find out in the relations screening method? What what is that process that you take people through? So there's a space that people go in to dating where they are literally just trying to figure out what they want and who they want to date, what type of personalities fit with them, like who would be a good teammate, who they are. And that's where you're casually dating and not necessarily like looking for a relationship. And then there's a space where you're looking for an actual relationship and you're hoping that it has the potential to teach you the things that relationships teach you. And from there, discover if you would like to marry each other. And mm -hmm. so when we're doing a screening, what we're doing is initially just trying to figure out like, what's your intent? And not necessarily thinking, oh, they don't mean that. Like if a girl says, I just want to casually date. And he's like, but I'm pretty sure I could convince her to marry me. <laughs> All right. You know, like accepting where they're at. All right. That is a little bit of a disconnect, isn't it? Now, now we, but we really push the concept of relationship development. And in the early stages of that, the thing that we discuss is to make sure to do so what we consider to be simple things, but for some people it's difficult, like making eye contact and active listening and giving genuine compliments. Asking follow-up questions. And, yes, and being, having a sense of humor. Or do you find that mm -hmm. those are things that your clients need coaching on? Sometimes, yes. Especially, I think that uh, we're, we're so afraid of leading people on and being told that we're a player or we're a tease or something like that. And so we, try, we tend to have this little mask of mysteriousness that we carry and we don't feel very comfortable being transparent about I'm having a good time or I'm having a bad time. Mm -hmm. And so having a good sense of humor, showing, I, I always say to my clients, if you're having a good time, tell your face. Hmm. because it's safe to say to them that I'm having a good time. Yeah. Right. Well, and I think people want to hear that, right? Well, I, I think, yeah. but I, th I think what we're saying here is these are people who've had previously a bad experience sometimes. And so they're a little bit uh, guarded. Some, some haven't had any experience. Yeah. Or right. no um, experience. At all. Yeah, yeah. We run yeah. into that mm -hmm. down here in Provo. Now, too. now <laughs> you know, about that, we, we discussed this. If, if, I'm sure that you have noticed that, over the last 10 years that you've been doing this, that dating continues to diminish. We've seen that, uh, you know, research showing both nationally and globally that the ability to connect with people is diminishing, you know, with every generation, every high school graduation <laughs> class. And do you, as you have looked through this, do you agree with that? And do you have any idea on why you, that this is, we've seen this phenomenon? You know, I haven't read that research, so I'm going to kind of take that in a minute. But I would definitely say that the face-to-face -face connecting is diminishing because we are struggling to tolerate the discomfort of the unknown. You know, when you're building a relationship with someone, you don't often know right off the bat if they are interested in you. Right. And I mean, it can take up to the fourth or fifth date before you're like, do they like me? Do they not? And people are wanting to know if they're in before you even ask them out or especially right after that first date. And there should be like, you're talking about this journey to discover. Right. And that's mm -hmm. where, that's where the connection builds because you're trying to figure out how it is to be with them in life and tolerating that discomfort. We, we don't want to do that. Well, that's, it, where it's very... the, that's where all the fun is, is in the discovery mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. where you're finding out what each other likes and, right. and what, you know, each other's personalities. And I think if we miss out on that, we miss out on a lot of things about each other. Right. But, well, and, and there's a, there's a problem with people not necessarily knowing who they are or what they like. And so then they want to show up with right. as, well, you know, I want you to like me. Right. And so I'm going to just do be say whatever. So. We, we've had a couple of episodes where we discussed the importance of dating and the, what it teaches you about yourself. So, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering when you have clients, is that part of, of your therapy, so to speak, is to have them, ex, you know, explore who they are and what they want. Right. Is, is that an important part of what you do? Yes. And I just love you guys for that, by the way. I just love that. The first place to start in dating is always self-discovery. And it's usually the last place most people want to start because 
it, it requires a little bit of self-confrontation. And mm -hmm. if we stay too long in self-actualization and confrontation, we can feel like we're terrible and we feel right. depressed and so we don't <laughs> love it. So you kind of have to move in and out of that. But Interesting. that's, that's it, it's not the immediate reward. We yeah. The reward in our mind is like the boyfriend or the making everybody see how happy we are together rather than like sitting and doing self-care and self-discovery. But how can you show up for attachment if there's an unknown person to attach to? Right. We had a guest on not too long ago and she said that that when she was dating is like every date she went on, she would sit down and self reflect and she'd say, what did I learn about me from this date? Do you talk to you, some of your clients about that? Yes, we definitely do the, what did I think and do I like them and how did I show up and what do I feel like were my highs and lows um, in, in terms of how it was. Uh, I just did a, a three episode uh, podcast with, this uh, darling girl named Jill from Good Things Utah. Oh, I listened and, to that, yes. Oh, she's so great. And a lot of what you can hear on that too is just her processing her discovery of like, I'm attractive and I'm desirable and this is the type of person that I want and this is the type of person that would be good for me. And that was all through that dating experience. Hmm. Now, now, is there a client that you can think of that you could share with us, of course, without names, to, to kind of explain where they were when you started with them, what process you went through and what the outcome was? Yes. Oh my gosh. Let me think. Uh, so many, so many, I'm just, I don't know if, how you guys feel, but in your line of work, we were just feel like, gosh, I'm so blessed. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. We, we had this one great student. Her, her name was Macy. And, <laughs> and when we she found out a lot. She, 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 I mean, she's just amazed. She didn't even know how to swim when she met us. And <laughs> Look what we've done with her. Oh we my feel goodness. And she, she dated basketball <laughs> players. So, yeah, she had. Well, we can't take credit for that. Macy's a. She, she knows all. She knows more about this than we do. She should be hosting this. Oh show. no no. <laughs> That's part of what you get as the internship, right, Macy? It's a ring by spring or your money back. Just oh, right. okay. <laughs> We're not even close, but we'll. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I can I can speak with a client that I worked with for uh, a little while that came in with a kind of deficit in, in terms of self-discovery and mm -hmm. struggling because many people wanted to date her, but she had a hard time letting people in unless she had them vetted through other sources or people somehow. Hmm. And so she went through a period of life where she was living in different places. And since she didn't know people from, you know, back home days, right. she just didn't feel comfortable going out. Mm -hmm. And so we, we had worked on that quite a bit. And eventually got to a point where uh, I was coaching her and she let me have access to her app. And I went oh. through and said, okay, these are the, you know, this is the screening method. This is what we're doing. Like, who do you feel like meets this criteria? And then I'd pass her some names and, and guys and stuff. And uh, eventually she talked with um, a young man that, I mean, it ended up being she was, she was not great at texting. She was not great at responding <laughs> and their, their, uh, texting conversations ended up being pretty organic as they just asked some of those basic questions and found out that they had grown up in some of the same areas. They had traveled to some of the same areas. They had some of the same, uh, interests and hobbies things and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I actually just, um, met with, I met him in real life recently. Hmm. I got to meet him and they are just in love and it's adorable. Hmm. Hmm. That, that's really fun. That's got to be really rewarding for you to see that kind of stuff happen because uh, that's where love goes to blossom, not to die. Exactly. Is, is when you see relationships Loved. like that. Right? I, got, mm -hmm. I got a question for you with, with the whole the, the dating screening thing. So you like you did the whole screening thing with her, but what does that process look like when you actually put it into practice? I mean, when you're going well, you through the app with them. Yeah, okay. yeah, we go through the app with them or just like in life in general, you say, you know, I have the screening process that I teach my clients. Like, what does that mean? Yes. Yeah, so, well, that's what goes into my four week class. So I'm going to try to summarize it um, as best as I can. But in order to do like all the application and things that come with it, basically what we're looking for are characteristics that someone has that would contribute to them having good long term commitment potential. Hmm. So like, I'll just give you one of them. So one of them is empathy. 
Mm -hmm. So when you look at someone who has empathy, they would be likely to be a good partner because they would be able to tolerate discomfort. They would be able to think about someone else's shoes. They interact with the world in a pleasant way. Uh, They're, it's easier to bring up like maybe a conflict type of question or scenario or things because it's likely that they'll be able to think, oh, this must be hard. We could try to talk through this. And empathy is one of those characteristics that I think we see a lot of, Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily like your mom's not gonna be like, go find someone who's empathetic. They may say like, go find someone (laughs) who's kind. (laughs) But I think in bad relationships, they can be kind to you and mean to other people. And you're like, well, but they're nice to me. So we're looking for empathy towards you and towards other people. It's kind of how they interact with the world, how they speak of people, those things. And Bob and I have talked about that a lot is when you go on a date, you can tell a lot about the person by they, the way they treat the waiter or the, yes. the server or the way they hold, if they hold the door open right. for someone else, or you can really tell a lot about kindness mm-hmm. and whether they're doing that. Now, it, now let's, let me just ask you this. But no, no, she, was, she was saying but the empathy was that, were there more on that list? than empathy there are i mean i don't know if i'm if i'm going to reveal all my secrets on a, the okay. podcast <laughs> well, well just just we, tem- we are, just yeah. tempt our we won't, just tempt we our won't listeners. tell anyone it's just between us so, <laughs> so good. no i don't i don't mind because honestly i i would shout them from the rooftops i i really feel okay. like they're important but as far as just like getting the nitty-gritty of what they mean and what they look like on a date that's probably gonna take me too long but we go through um, the building principles and how you look, you're looking at empathy for like an A minus B plus range. So I don't want anybody to be perfect, but I also don't like if they, if they get a C on something or there's something that you're like, this just doesn't feel right. That's a fl- that's the flag for you where you go. I just want to have a conversation. I want to right. understand things a little bit better. Hmm. Um, the other one, one of the other ones I'm looking at is impulse control. So impulse control is, Oh, gall. I mean, it's a, it's a lengthy conversation that you can have with someone, <laughs> right. but it kind of felt if you're looking into, um, oh gosh, this is going to give you like a whole, I'm going to try to paraphrase. Let me think. Um, if you're looking at attachment principles and like, let's say that maybe someone has more of an avoidant attachment style where they kind of keep things at arm's length. Right. They may also have some impulse control issues because they're self-soothing through ways that are not helpful or not going to be able to maybe propel them towards the goals that they have. Does that mean that they're all bad? Absolutely not. Right, not right. all bad. But sometimes when you continue with impulse control problems and then you get into a committed relationship, those impulse control issues can interrupt the flow of the relationship and how things go if they don't take responsibility for them and continue to work on them. If they minimize it and act like it's not there. Interesting. Now, are these things that people are finding once they're they're out on a date and talking, or are these things they're finding out by looking through an app? Oh, absolutely. While you're getting to know someone, okay, good. Mm-hmm. I think that sometimes in an app you can see a few flags and things, but I always prefer getting to know someone. And usually, you're you're going to take a, a while getting to know them before you're going to be sure and you know people change over time so it's, right. it's not like this is a firm fast thing but these are just some guiding principles for like when to have a conversation and and what to notice so empathy uh attachment i mean uh, impulse control and anything mm-hmm. else that you recommend people look for in this dating screening yes taking responsibility so it's this t- double piece of personal responsibility where you're looking for someone who is willing to look at internally and say like that was my bad i take responsibility for Mm. that but you know that that piece of integrity that that you carry with you Mm -hmm. uh and not blaming or you know projecting it on someone else or saying well sometimes there are circumstances that lead you to do something but also taking responsibility for that uh Mm. and the other part of that one i think is is the the piece of um just like taking responsibility for yourself hmm. in, in attachment where, where we want to sacrifice and, um, you know, bring ourselves into a relationship by saying like, I'm going to choose to be there for you and I'm going to let you be there for me. And I'm still working on identifying who I am as a person. And I hope that you can be there as I discover myself and I have this journey for myself, but 
along that way, there's that piece where you're saying like, I got to put food on my table and I got to pay my rent and I got to put gas in my car. Mm -hmm. And if I'm just like, oh, those things, I don't care. I'm not doing these things. I don't need to, or I'm going to um, place that on somebody else. It can be really hard to mm -hmm. do a relationship. And then, and these are things you, that you go through through your training, your four week training, you said. Yeah. So these three particular principles came from Elisa Goodwin Snell. She, uh, I don't know if you guys have had her. She's, she'd be a great guest, but she's a dating coach here in Utah. And she, she's, she had some principles that came from her experience after she was divorced. The way that I teach it in my class is that you look at these three guiding principles and then in the initial part of your build, I teach a build alongside attachment, alongside the phases of dating, along with male and female psychology. So that's kind of the four week class in a nutshell. Nice. But the, the way that that pieces together is just how to pace things so that you're making progress and having movement happen while also not just throwing caution to the wind. So I, I can see here that uh, we think a lot alike on things. Uh, I think the difference is, is that you're, she's really smart. She's And yeah, you can tell by the way she talks. Yeah, she does. She's got this we're thing. We're just shooting off the hip. We there, are, we... man. We're just making this stuff. We go along. She's actually got science behind this deal. <laughs> Wow. It, it, it makes me really happy, though, that yeah, we're it right. It, it makes I, us happy that there's people we, like her out there. We always bring people oh, on the guys. show that say we're right. Yes. So I just hey, wanted to know, are. I mean, while we have you here and while, you know, you are a counselor and a coach, what would you tell our listeners? What would you tell them, like, really your top three things that they should start thinking about, they should start doing to really kind of help them get out of this, uh, this fear that a lot of them yeah. have? Because we run into a lot of young men that at, at least here in our culture that are just are just uh, frozen with fear yeah. and they just can't get out of the apartment and one of mine and bob's biggest fears is that these uh are that these young people are staying home on friday and saturday night all alone and we mm -hmm. want to try to fix that and that's why we want them to go out to dinner so what would be some of the things that you would recommend that they do right away well, I think the very first step is recognizing that you are incredible as you are. There isn't some like magical journey that you have to be on in order to be worthy of love and to be attractive and have, have someone find you attractive. As you are, someone thinks you're magical and you're great. But the journey is to discover who and right, whom. Right. It's more, it's, you're not going to be a fit for everybody and everybody right. is not going to be a fit for you. And so if you can get out of your own way and stop asking someone that 15 other people are asking out and look for people that are a better match for you in that way, maybe not better. Maybe that didn't sound great. But, you know, we, we tend to think um, I have to have xyz together before i could take someone on a date right right and you've got to get out of that men of methodology yeah, XYZ will never happen right so wait so you said something well, that yeah. i hear a lot from oh sorry that i hear a lot no, from, from boys my age they say oh well i'm i know took this girl on a date and she you know she's been asked out by 15 other guys but like you know, and it's like, well, there's all these other girls out there, but everyone wants to take this one girl out is the question. Does Are you saying don't take the, that girl out or are you saying that there's other options out there? What do, you, what do you mean by that? I'm just curious. I'm saying that usually they're asking her out because she's saying yes to other people. And so they feel like, oh, it's she is probably going to say yes. She's not someone that's going to turn me down. She's, oh, she also probably is giving them, giving guys like a smile and a like a pleasant face. And so they're like, more willing to take the risk because mm. I, I don't know that it's something that like she's the most attractive and maybe maybe she is to to them but it's just there's this risk reward ratio that men run up against when it comes to dating and they if they're going to take a risk they want to be darn sure they're probably going to get the reward <laughs> okay, yeah, that's because <laughs> yeah. ah, they're scared of rejection mm -hmm. when we, we run into here we run into what we call the 80 20 rule and that is that 80% of the men want to date 20% of the women and all the other ones mm -hmm. get ignored. Mm -hmm. So we try to encourage mm -hmm. the, you know, to you know, look around you. There mm -hmm. are, are so many wonderful people who would like to go out to dinner with you and just get to know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but we find mm -hmm. that most of our concern is there, there's some uh, of the males who have no problem asking girls out and they're fine. They're going to be mm -hmm. fine. We're, we're not worried about them. 
And, and there's a certain number of the females that get asked out a lot, or they are brave enough to ask men out. Right. We're, we're not really worried about mm-hmm. them. They're, they're going to be just fine. The ones that we're worried about are the ones who seem to have been somehow diminished in their ability to learn how to connect with the opposite sex. They, they have somehow mm-hmm. in life, they missed that, that part of their, <laughs> their growth stage where they learn to communicate with members of the opposite sex mm-hmm. in, in a way that would develop relationship. And, and that seems to be where mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're finding a disconnect is that for some reason, they are just not comfortable in going up and talking to a woman. And especially not uh, not yeah, to I, expose themselves to say let let's get to know each other. Yeah, there's a there's a piece where the, them being kind of confident enough to say like, hey, I'm interested in you feels terrifying. Yeah. And then I think the other piece is they they don't necessarily have a very diversified conversation base. And so women, we we are like this walking anomaly yes. because yes. you know, I'll I'll give you an example. I was at a um single adult weekend conference a couple of weeks ago and this darling young man uh, after my second class came up and talked to me and he had this exact problem I said well tell me a little bit about you and he did a very good job telling me about him and I had no clue what he was talking about <laughs> bless him <laughs> he was saying <laughs> things that I was like neat and <laughs> rather than do I said I said so most of the time if you're going to be with a female and you're going to be using this unless she knows exactly what you're talking about she's going to say words like well that's cool and me and oh my gosh right, that's cool right. tell me more <laughs> and so he's going to think oh this is great she wants to talk to me more about this and inside she's like i'm so bored yeah i want to get away from well, this see guy. we find that at universities because our colleagues say well let me tell you about my research yeah it's and like ooh. <laughs> ooh, get me out of here <laughs> exactly. so, so i understand what you mean because it's interesting to you doesn't necessarily it's going to be interesting to another person and that's where the verbal and audible cues come in that some people seem to miss the ability to read the other person and find out if they're actually interested in what you're saying or not. Right. Well, and and you need to be a little bit more diversified in terms of things that you're interested in, right. unless you're going to date someone that has the exact personality type and interest that you do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes being contemporary means that you have to know like what's in the top 10 of Netflix and you know, your favorite podcast and a new, some of the new bands that are coming into town. And if you're not staying up on that, you know, that's kind of where some of the current conversations come in. Right. Interesting. So is that something that you coach your clients to do is to kind of stay up on pop culture? Not necessarily pop culture, but just to stay up. I'm like open, you know, open a news app once a day. Um, If it's entertainment news and, you know, social news in local or wherever, national news, um, have a couple of talking points that you could bring anywhere you go. Because one of the other common complaints I get is I'll go somewhere and, and everyone just wants to talk about why I'm single. And I'm like, well, (laughs) bring the conversation somewhere else. That's really, that's a really true point. I will tell you, this is like, why are you single? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. now, Now we see a lot also, uh, dysfunctional because of pressure from friends and family. Because many mm-hmm. times friends and families are saying, oh, are you dating? Well, have you found yeah. anyone? And they're kind of pushing you. Well, you know, you guys have been dating for six months. Is there anything serious? Yeah, when are you going to get married? Are you just wasting your time? So do you find uh, that your clients that come to you are suffering from that too, that sometimes externally family members and friends are pushing them too hard and causing them yeah. to have anxiety? Absolutely. There's this phrase, um, I mean, it falls under the umbrella of should, but it's, you should know by now. And there's this story that's kind of perpetuated and told, uh, you know, the first date we stayed up and we couldn't get enough of each other. And um, it happened before us so quickly, we just knew. And when you know, you know, some of these Mm -hmm. things that this is how, uh, and forgive me, but the older generation explains dating to the current generation. Right. And, they don't necessarily hear it the same way. They hear it through, oh my gosh, I'm never going to know and I don't know, and so I'm out. All right. Interesting. So so the failure to communicate the reality of relationships from generation to generation contributes to, to this. That, that's interesting. Yeah, we, there's... See, see, Tom and I have taken responsibility and blame for the dysfunctional <laughs> nature of dating in the LDS <laughs> culture because... Somebody's got to take the blame yeah, for it's it. It's our so. fault. So it's our fault, you yeah. know. So we, we caused and this we're problem. To, we're trying to fix it. One fairness. episode at a time. One we're trying at a time. To, to, to fix this. 
And so it's uh, it, it's an interesting situation that I think that you find yourself in in your career, which I think is is this has got to be a rewarding field for you to to be in. And thank goodness that there's somebody yeah. out there who who can do this, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I came from the school of hard knocks. Uh, <laughs> I was single, 27, graduated as a therapist and living in Pleasant Grove and just, you know, was like, what is it that I am missing? Right. I dated a lot and I just couldn't quite find the match. And so I jokingly say, like, I am now teaching you what I learned and then yeah. applied and then had success with. So I, I thought part that was of the one successful of the most relationship building method. I thought oh, sorry, that was ahead. an interesting thing on your website. You said, look, I've lived this. Mm-hmm. I've experienced this and I'm, I, I know exactly what all this means. So I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting. yeah, I, I used to think if I'm not married by the time I'm 23, it's I'm, all, I'm, I'm going to be an old maid and get a cat and that's it. <laughs> right. Well, if, if people are find themselves in the situation that we've described here and they have a lot of anxiety and a lot of concern, how can they get a hold of you to to have you work with them? Oh, I would love to work with them. Uh, you can get me via my website or via email. My email is Lonnie, L-O-N-I, at the datingcounselor.com. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And through my Instagram um, link, you can schedule appointments right there. Oh, great. Oh, now, what about your podcast? My podcast is on all major podcast platforms. Um, I usually just search The Dating Counselor, and I am on season five, so there's wow. quite mm. a slew of... <laughs> yeah, I started during COVID, so there's no. a lot of episodes for you. Well, Bob and I know um, a couple just... of guys that would be really good guests on your Yes, pod- yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I, well, I'm hoping I'm, I want to put you guys on my deck. I want to put this episode on my deck. Do you, but yeah, have, I would love to have, have an, you on. That'd be so do fun. you have a high end age re- restriction though? You know, do you cut it off at sixty or you know? I do we... not. Oh, okay. Right. Well, it's good we, to know before. We are wise in years. Yes, that's what, that's right. what it is. We can do an episode called "What's the Difference Between Our Generations." That would be a good yeah. episode. We've got a lot of. Experience. Bob and I are very fortunate to work with a very young group of people, Mm -hmm. and they not only do they keep us young, but we learn a lot about Mm -hmm. them. And we have, of course, Macy here that she keeps us in line and Mm -hmm. helps us to know what what a thing was. We had no no idea controlling you guys. I don't know about keeping you in line. And and we didn't even know how to pronounce it. Thing. We we pronounced it thing, (laughs) and and it's a thing. It's a thing. You know. So we're learning a lot here. Yeah. I think that you guys are on the right track with surrounding yourself by smart people. We yes. are. And yeah, we do that on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Well, Lonnie, thank you so much for being with us uh, oh, and taking your time. And we are just so happy that you came. And you guys, listen, if you're looking for someone, if you need help, if you're struggling, not only, Bob, not only can you go to the It's Just Inner podcast, mm-hmm. but you can talk to Lonnie Harmon. You could, through she us. Could help she, you. And, we, we, we are bringing you to her. And make sure you tell her yeah. that you were referred by yeah. the It's Just Inner podcast. Yes. And ma- oh, maybe, you she, guys are maybe the they best. get a coupon or something. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give, them, a, I'll give them a deal. Well, Good. thank you so much. This has just been absolutely wonderful. We appreciate all of your advice. And... I hope everyone will, if they're struggling, they'll take a chance to take an opportunity to reach out and talk to you. Lonnie's on Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram. And yes. guess what? We are also ah, on Instagram. There you go. You can go listen to us or check us out on the It's Just Dinner podcast on Instagram. Lots of mm-hmm. fun things yes. going up. We have some people trying to help us do some film. And uh, maybe they'll even see you and I on a promo. Oh, that's a little scary. And that is kind of scary that scary. Our, we show our faces for yeah. the first time. Yeah. Um, and you can al- happen. you can also find us on TikTok at the It's Just Enter podcast as well. So listen, you guys, email us, check us out. And if you have any questions, send those in on our email. And we really appreciate you listening. We have new episodes coming out every Friday. So be sure to tune in, follow us, like us, leave us comments. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Bob, thanks for coming. My pleasure. Macy, Excellent show. thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for inviting me back. Mm-hmm. And we really appreciate all your help. And listen... Just go have fun out there, would you?